Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I have a new gimmick for you. This one's actually doing fairly well. It's taken me to rank 15 so far, and it doesn't seem to be stopping. I call it Michael Bay. This is a deck about explosions. Initially, the idea came about since the addition of the Madder Bomber and things like the Bomb Lobber were put into the game. I thought, wow, we could make a, a deck about explosions. Well, there's not actually that many cards that explode, but there are plenty of cards that deal random damage. So, if you combine AoEs, random damage, and explosions, what do you get? You get Michael Bay. Everything in this deck explodes in some way or another, whether it be through random arcane missile damage, whether it be through a random flame cannon shot, an explosive sheep, knives all over the place, bombs all over the place, wild pyromancer AoE all over the place, rocks all over the place, I mean, you don't even have to explain that one. It literally has the term blast in the title. Abominations, they explode. Bomb lobbers, they throw bombs. Matter bombers, well, I think that's self-explanatory. Flame strike is basically one giant explosion. Baron Geddon has a tendency to explode at the end of every turn. Dr. Boom literally summons bombs and has boom in his name. I think that counts. The flame leviathan explodes as soon as you draw it from the deck. The Fur Reaper 4000, this is maybe the only one that you could get away with saying, hang on a minute. That's, that doesn't explode. Well, it kind of does. It's got AoE. It damages any minion next to it, so it can hit three minions at a time. Ragnaros the Fire Lord, the Fire Lord, I mean, come on. That's a, that's just, he's a living explosion. And Mechjanir Thermoplug, that's not an explosion. Yes, but he summons Lepinomes, which do explode on death. So there is that. And there's no card draw in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, this is the, the classic problem with a lot of gimmick decks, is that they completely lack card draw in any respect. Interestingly enough, I haven't found that to be too big a problem because we have the benefit of hopefully being really efficient. Lots of AoEs, the ability to get two for ones, so you can still maintain a card advantage in some situations. Not all, by any means. Uh, you get bad draws and you end up not getting where you need to be, you can very easily run out of steam with a deck like this because it doesn't have any card draw in it. So, as usual with gimmicks, you, you want to shave a bit off the gimmick in order to make it a little bit more effective, but that's not what this show is all about. There's a couple of other things we could have included in there, of course, Arcane Explosion, Blizzard, they would have absolutely countered, could have put in Doomsayer, that's an explosion, technically, I suppose. And there's a couple of other cards here and there, but this is the composition that I came up with, and it seems to work reasonably well, so let's take it on ladder, shall we? See what happens. Ruby and Egg would actually synergize quite well with this. To some degree, anyway, thanks to Explosive Sheep. Alright, so let us begin. Going first. Not a huge fan of going first with this deck. Probably toss the sheep. I don't know, actually, it's rogue. Maybe we'll keep the sheep. You might put some little. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's a bad start. Okay, so. The Flame Leviathan only triggers when you draw it. Getting the Flame Leviathan in your opening hand is really bad, because basically it then becomes a War Golem for all intents and purposes, which is not a good card anyway. Only advantage the Flame Leviathan has here is that it happens to be a mech, so it will synergize with our Blast Mages, but yeah, you don't want that. Absolutely not. It's one of the... It's just a very strange card, because it's... One of only two cards, I believe, in the game that have an effect as soon as you draw it. The other one being the bomb, that mine that you put into the opponent's deck using the... I keep forgetting the name of that damn thing. Whatever that legendary is for the warrior that puts mines in people's decks. So it's a little bit of a weird one. Okay, probably Wild Pyromancer here, but he's going to get... If he has a mech, he's going to get a slight lead because he got his mech warper out and I couldn't respond to it. To be fair, there's, no, there's nothing I could have done. Unless I got very lucky with arcane missiles, so it's whatever. And it looks like he doesn't have a mech, so he's just going to trade. That's fine. And that's good, because he has a knife, and I can put Demolisher out without too many worries here. Good, good, good. But yeah, it's a strange one. Th this thing can screw you over. This thing can win you the game. This thing could do neither of those things if it ends up in your hand. I, I mean, it's not even a solid turn 7, because Baron Geddon is probably better. Although it depends on the situation. It may very well be... Well, if we get the auto barber out of this, I'll be very happy. And we do. That's that's a bargain. That's an absolute bargain. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we don't have a turn four. I think I have a couple in my deck. But I might... And the curve is something that this deck is perhaps a bit rough on, to say the least. We could play the explosive sheep, but there is no point. 
yeah, basically there's no point in doing anything this turn. And that sucks because I have a board advantage and I would have wanted to capitalize on that, but I don't have anything to do. So, never mind. I guess we do a little bit of damage and then the Demolisher dies next turn to that knife. And then we play a turn 5 Abomination, which will slow down his side of the board. Which is not too shabby. Also means I won't have anything on the board myself for the Abomination to blow up, so that's always a plus. If for some inexplicable reason he doesn't kill the Demolisher, then maybe Arcane Missiles next turn, but no, I don't think so. It's, I think the Abomination is going to be the way to go. I can't see why you wouldn't kill the Demolisher. You've already lost a creature to it. It's already become value, so... Why? You wouldn't leave it. No reason. Unless, of course, you've gone AFK because someone's offered to cook you a hot dog or something along those lines, which... is possible. He's not selecting any cards. Has he been eaten by a bear that suddenly made its way into his room unannounced? It is possible. These are all the kind of things that you need to bear in mind. I think he may have gone AFK. No, he's awake. Okay. Nice for him. Good. Piloted Shredder. Okay, so he's now going to kill that. Obviously. It's fine. Well, what goes off first? I assume that... I assume it explodes before... Whose death rattle goes off first? Because if it summons it and then it explodes, that's amazing. But I imagine it doesn't. Yeah, they, the abomination's maybe not the best thing here, but I don't really have any other choice. I Actually, I mean, Arcane Missile's ping probably does the job. But the issue is that then he has a creature on the board and I've just burned my entire turn. So I think we're just going to play the abomination. And I can't remember which order the death rattles go off in. I'm pretty sure the explosion goes off first before the summon, which sucks. But ultimately, I'm not going to throw a bunch of cards out just to try and eliminate that and then have nothing on the board. Oh! It doesn't! But he got the best possible minion he could have out of that. Millhouse Mana Storm is the best two drop there is. But we're going to kill it with Arcane Missiles or a sheep. Possibly a sheep. I'm thinking of the double sheep. But I have a bomb lobber, which is pretty good too. Okay, so... Hmm. Arcane missiles, if it kills the millhouse, is amazing here. Oh, oh. It doesn't. Uh, well, we sheep now then. Okay. Well, so we don't have to play the bomb lobber at all. We can just play the sheep. And then we blow the sheep up. And then he loses both. Cool. That's good. That worked out pretty well. So... There's the answer. The death rattle of the Shredder goes off first, and then the explosion goes off. Which was fantastic, because otherwise that would have been a 3-4-4 he got, and that would have sucked. So that all worked out to plan. There's a few weird things about the order of the way that stuff goes off in this game that I'm not entirely clear on. And that's down to entirely to my own idiocy. It's not the game's fault. Okay. So, 50-50 on the Bomb Lobber. We could just throw down the Flame Leviathan, although he has the means to kill it. I'm pretty keen on the 50-50 on the Bomb Lobber, honestly. Nice. And we win the roll. Nothing wrong with that. So, it's not really going to go a 2 for 1, it's going to go 2.5. Because you'll ju probably just pull knives and then run the 2-2 into it, but it works. Baron Geddon wouldn't have really made a lot of sense. He would have just run everything into it and then probably knifed it or backstabbed it or used a million and one other damage dealing things. Uh, it looks like he's just going to use deadly poison. Okay. Not the worst thing to ever happen. Again, a pretty slow game up to this point. I think it's probably going to end up being Flame Leviathan here. Yeah, Geddon doesn't make a lot of sense because he has a strong knife out, so... Yeah, I mean, if he wants to take 7 damage to the face, I'm happy to let him do that, but he's more than likely just got something in his hand to do a bit of damage, then he'll throw the 4-5 at it. Maybe he's got an Eviscerate, in which case he just trades the Yeti into it. But I want that thing out of my hand. It's not really that useful right now. Put a big threat on the board, make him respond to it. I still have my Geddon. I still got things like my Faux Reaper. Blood Mage Thalnos, so I imagine he has a spell. Nope. SI7. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. And then an Eviscerate. Alright. 
Well, he burned a lot of cards to get rid of that, and he now has a board which I am going to flame strike. So I am fairly happy with how that turned out. I could get in it, but that makes no sense. Yeah, we we just flame strike his board at this point and then blow up his Yeti. And everyone is super happy about that. There we go. I get myself a Rusty Horn. Probably the worst of the things I could have got from that, but hey, it's a card. Good. So that was a pretty efficient use of the flame strike. He flooded the board after using a lot of cards to get rid of my Flame Leviathan, so I'm pretty happy with how that went. That's another one of his Eviscerates gone. In other words, you're Drake. He's drawing hard here. And this is just... He's just putting out a lot of really good cards on the board, which unfortunately I don't necessarily have. We do have a combo here. So what we do is Wild Pyromancer, and then we throw down the Rusty Horn, which puts out an explosion, and then that detonates the explosive sheet, which blows everything else up again. And then we ping that to kill it. Yeah. What to do. Yeah, we can do that. And the explosive sheep is going to get the taunt. There we go. Are you ready for fireworks? I hope so. Hey! Isn't that fun? A Noyatron. That's not fun. Demolish is not really great here because he'll just kill it with a wicked knife. He's got no damage on the board. This is going long. That was a fun little combo. I like throwing those out. Oh, God. Of course he had another one. Nightmare. Does it get more efficient than that? It's one of the best cards in the game right now, I think. Honestly, I don't think there's any way to argue around that. It's just that damn good. Efficient card. The efficient card. It's like, hey, these are all good cards. Well, yeah. <laughs> such is the way of it. You will encounter such things. Matter Bomber Abomination. Two damage really isn't enough. Yeah, I think Matter Bomber Abomination is the way to go. There we go. It's a target rich environment. That could have been a lot better. But it did pop the shield, and now we can put down the Abomination, which will then detonate and wipe that stuff out. Yeah, again, pretty efficient. I'm still losing, though. I mean, that's, I'm starting to run out of cards. He clearly is not running out of cards. But we are getting some fun explosions out of it, which I suppose is, is the main point of all of this. So unless he has a silence, he's going to lose two minions out of this minimum. And one of them is going to be his big scary Tinker Town Technician. So it's not too shabby. Unless, of course, he has like a Earthen Ring Farseer to heal it. A Dark Scale. What have you got? What do you have? Yep, I think he's accepted his fate. There we go. And he can now... Will he spend five health to kill that? Mm, that's borderline on what's good and what isn't. I think if he uses his knife here, we might play Geddon next turn. I'm really just hoping for something like Thermaplug or Faux Reaper, something that's really tough on the board. Well, I guess he doesn't have to do that because he has Argent Commander. Never mind. Oh, this is a Baron Geddon situation here. What? He's going for the face. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I have almost no health, so... And he's cloaking it so I can't ping it. Oh, man. Ah, uh, well, that's game, I think. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything. So, if if I played Demolisher Goblin Blast Mage, I might kill that if I'm lucky. But I'll still die anyway, so that's game. That's a hard deck to fight. We had some fun plays, but ultimately it's just like, this is all the best cards. <laughs> You're not going to be able to stop it. Oh, well. It's just the life you lead when you play a subpar deck for entertainment. It's hard not to be a little salty after something like that, though. It's like, but look at all these great plays we had. It's like, yeah, just please stop playing really efficient cards. Oh, oh, it's just, it's too much. I can't. Uh, oh, well. Oh, I hate fighting against majors because explosive sheep becomes basically useless. Oh, Mad Bomber. Always nice. All right. Arcane Missile's Mad Bomber is... There's a nice early game. And a matter bomber for later on. Okay. Yeah, this is... 
it's, it's just not great in pretty much every way, because even your big threats, they probably have a polymorph for them or a fireball. So my success against mages with this deck has been extremely limited. What you got? Mad Scientist. Arcane Missiles is probably the safer way of getting rid of it. The probability of doing two damage to that Mad Scientist is relatively low. And if I don't do it, he then trades and gets a secret, so he's up. So I think we Arcane Missiles. And that was awful. Probably should have played the Mad Bomber. It would have done a better job. Ugh. Okay, well, it's got a 2-2 on the board. I suppose it's not the end of the world, is it? So, what happens next turn? Well, I guess we try the Mad Bomber and hope that that works. The Mad Bomber, in fact. I guess that that's all we can really play. <sighs> I trusted you. Should have held on. Then I could have gone Mad, Mad Bomber Arcane Missiles, but... Yeah... Yeah, that sucks. So he's going to be able to run his 2-1 two, two into that. He's going to Frostbolt it? He's going to keep that alive? That's a surprise. I would have traded that. I guess he didn't have a minion. Hmm. Well, we can play Goblin Blast Mage. That's probably fine now. It's not brilliant because I don't get to trigger his Battle Cry, which is the main advantage of that minion, but... I was sitting there pinging for one. Uh, I don't like it. He has a flame cannon. Of course he does. Well, that's that then. Okay. Matter Bomber, I suppose. I don't really want to use Bomb Lobber. It's more of a precision instrument. I think Matter Bomber is a better play here. Alternatively, we can go to... Now. Matter Bomber, clearly. Come on. One hit. Easy. Then throw the rest of them at him, preferably not me. Quit throwing bombs at me! Ah! Really? That... That's unusual. That triggered after the summoning. I mean, that's got to be due to the fact that during the summoning battle cry process, the thing died, right? I've never seen that before, but that pretty much just lost me the game, I think. I don't believe it. Uh, well, that's really bad. Man, I I've never seen it work that way before. My assumption was that since the secret had been summoned after the creature had been summoned, it wouldn't trigger Mirror Entity. But it did. So, I mean, I'm now massively behind and probably dead. Yeah. Uh, that's disgusting. That's completely disgusting. Well, thanks, I guess. Well, bear that in mind in future. If a mad scientist dies during a battle cry and gets mirror entity, then mirror entity will immediately trigger on whatever caused the battle cry. That's really not good. <laughs> Got him a free 5-4 that he could play immediately the turn afterwards. Damn. Alright. A mad bomb, a flame cannon. I like those. Toss the pyro. We've got enough twos. Get a three. Good. Okay. Well, let's hope for a little bit more luck. That game was one-sided and horrible. I w as usual, I was doing so well up until the recording. Then it's nothing but a pile of losses. <laughs> Miserable. Okay, coin pyro. Usually hold on to the flame cannon. Don't use it on a two drop. You want to save it for a three. Sometimes a four, depending. You just get the best value out of it that way. Oh, okay. So he has no play. That's good news. Probably just ping it and attack. Keep. It's better that than risk playing the mad bomber and blow up my own stuff. 
So I'm happy with that. I have a minion on the board. He's taking damage. He hasn't played anything yet. Haunted Creeper. All right. Well, this has... Oh, potential. Yeah. So we can, we can get rid of all of it, basically, at this point by... Although it will also blow up my Wild Pyromancer. So I think we just ignore it for the time being. And then we can blow it up the turn afterwards if need be. Yeah, so we play the Demolisher. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, well, what did I really do? I lost my 3-2 and I used an Arcane Missiles to blow up a 2-drop Spider and his little minions. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Better to let him just flail away with that damn thing. What's he going to do? He's going to buff it. Okay. Well, that turned out to actually be a lot worse than expected. Hmm. Well, that's annoying. Mad Bomber is probably the way to go here. Preferably. Yeah, if we could do that, it would keep it at two health. And then Mad Bomber. Well, no, you want to ping then Mad Bomber. Because then you've got a more target-rich environment. Less chance of taking bombs to the face. And we get both of them. Cool. Yep, that worked out perfectly. And we have Matter Bomber for next turn. And a Flame Cannon. So we have pretty good board control now. Flame Cannon will do five damage with the thing. So, oh, he has a Doom Hammer. All right, so he's killing both my minions. At least he's taking six damage to the face while he does it, I suppose. It could be worse. I guess we just Matter Bomber now and go for the throat. Yep, let's go. Go on, Matter Bomber. One for me, one for me. All right, we're about even. I think I came off slightly worse there. Did I? No. Yes. Yes, I came off worse. That's annoying. But it is a 5-4 on the board, and he's not going to take 10 damage to kill that. Maybe he has a Rock Biter and he takes 5. Even if he takes 5, that's still pretty good. I'm sitting on things like Rag and Baron Geddon, so... The more explosions, the better at this point. I have health to spare. He's starting to run out of it. What's he got? A Crackle. Statistically, that will kill. Three to six damage. He needed four. Odds were on his side. All right, continues to swing away with the hammer of impotence. And that leaves us with not much, really. It's going to have to be... I'm slowing down. It's this mid-game that gets me. If I don't have, say, blast mages with the demolisher to trigger, then I slow down in the mid-game and then end up losing board control. That's what I'm noticing with this. I'm wondering if there's a way to fix that while still remaining within curve. And actually remaining more to the point within gimmick. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Mm, Baron Geddon's not ideal here. Doesn't quite do the damage needed. It's a little annoying. But he's taking more damage, which is good. So maybe Geddon is the way to go. I could flame strike, but it's not a brilliant board to do it on. Yeah, I think we just get in. Do as much damage as possible. And then hope to set up for a Ragnaros kill. Because that'll take him down to 8. And then we have a potential Rag kill a turn afterwards. No. I have no intention of doing any of those things. Okay, so. If he wants to kill the Ragnar or the Baron Geddon, he's going to have to throw both those minions at it. Or maybe, maybe he has a Hex. Probably has a Hex, doesn't he? I imagine he does. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Still got a potential Ragnaros kill. But it's a 33% it's a chance of kill. Arcane Missiles is much better here. I think we wait a turn. Although I'm starting to lose health. Like, he might still kill me here. He's managed to unload a lot of hits on me. 25% chance for a rag kill. Not worth the risk. Want to try and wipe that board out, I think. So, I think we Arcane Missiles... And then we do it again. There we go. And then we ping to finish. All right. Leaves us with an empty board. And we have Flame Strike and Flame Cannon and Bomb Lobber. So the hope is he's not really able to get too much on that board. And then we throw Ragnaros out and hopefully kill him. Well, I suppose we're not going to be doing that. Bomb Lobber at least will kill that. 
assuming he doesn't have another minion to play. But the thing is, he's going to play a totem. That's the thing about Bomb Lover is it's not particularly good against Paladins and Shaman because of their summon powers. 50-50. 50-50. I'd probably go Knife Juggler, Bomb Lover. Alright, 50-50. Damn it! Screw it. Clear the board. Put threats on it so that I can potentially clear and then rag. I was hoping that would go the other way. And then maybe one knife went into the totem and then I could ping it to death, but... No. Wasn't gonna happen. Ugh, now comes down that delicious 4-4 at the Bomb Lover. B -b -eh, bomb Lover, Bomb Lover, not sure which. Dow, oh, come on! Okay, well the rag's still a good play here. Even if it just kills the 4-4, it's still pretty good. Unfortunately, he has a totem, which probably means it's gonna end up hitting that instead. And let's be honest, rag is basically my turn here. Well, we have another Bomb Lover, but I think we've gotta go for it now. All right, Rag, please do your job. Don't hit the totem. All right, cool. Got the 4-4. Four, four. I'm happy with that. I would have been happy with the face or the 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Does he have his other hex? Hopefully not. He has half his deck still there. He's probably not got his other hex. If he does, I'm probably going to lose because he has a lot of cards now. I do still have that flame strike. If he, if he floods the board in response to Ragnaros, then that's brilliant. For me. Because I just flame strike and then end him, hopefully. Flame tongue. Is he actually going to try and kill it? No, he doesn't have the firepower. He's just flooding the board, which is fine. Oh, this is amazing for me. Absolutely phenomenal. Yep, this is exactly what we were looking for. Really not even optimal placement on the flame tongue. But that's not going to make much difference because we're going to blow it up. There we go. That's that. And that'll take him down to two. Can he do 10 damage to me or somehow stop my Ragnaros? Because I do have that abomination. So that'll explode if I can trigger it. All right, this is looking pretty good. We might pick up our first win here. That would be nice. After getting my ass handed to me in a couple of games, that would be nice. I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> Something, anything. Okay. He can't do 7 damage with 4 mana now. Oh, Hansel Mechanico. Okay. Well, I need the ability to do 4 damage to him. Uh, 2 damage to him, sorry. Oh, Mata Bomber. Okay. Mata Bomber might actually kill here. Take him down to 1. Throw the Mata Bomber out. We need 1 bomb. We just, we just need 1 bomb to hit. Just 1. Come on. It's not that much to ask for. Not that much. Yeah! There we go. Matter Bomber being a bro. Fantastic. That's what we like to see. We did it! We successfully Michael Bait something. That's a plus. Let's see if we can get any more out of that. Alright. We got ourselves another Shaman. We'll see how that goes. Again, I still don't really like playing against them. Things like Demolishers, unfortunately, have a rough time against Totems, Flame Cannons. I like basically all of this random damage. On the plus side, Area of Effect tends to be a lot better. So I suppose it kind of balances out, doesn't it, really? I suppose we're about to find out. All right. So, no turn one plays. Plenty of turn twos, though. Plenty of options. So if he somehow coins out something incredible, like the, the whirl o -matic, I'd probably Flame Cannon that, honestly. He's evidently not going to do that, but... Yeah, if it was something as crazy and threatening as a whirl i would definitely kill that pretty much immediately. Normal 2-drops, I don't like to flame cannon most of the time. I like to save it for a 3 if possible. It looks like we're going to get a 3. So this might be good for us. Ah, uh, the, the thing which I wasn't really keen on. Mm. Uh, well, we do hate that, don't we? Well, I think the, the best thing to do here is probably just play Demolisher and then go for the face. And good. It, the knife went where I wanted it to go. That's like the one three drop that you don't want to flame cannon. It's like, ah, I killed it! Uh, oh, it's, it's still there. Oh, bloody hell. And I didn't have the... I would have done it maybe if I had the mana for the ping. But this is actually 
potentially even better. In fact, it's absolutely even better. Oh, lovely. This is perfect. Fantastic. So Pyromancer Flame Cannon. Flame Cannon on an Unbound Elemental? Absolutely. And yes, we are playing the right order here. I don't actually want it to go off. There we go. Good. He still has that massive card lead, though. <laughs> So, if we look at what, what's represented on the board, I have two creatures, and so that's five cards worth. He's sitting on six. Mm, all right. Matter Bombers for the next couple of turns. Potentially good, but potentially disastrous. <laughs> We've got to watch out. Oh, no! Oh, dear. Well, this could get really bad really fast. Let's see where that bomb goes. Cool. Went the place I wanted it to go. Matter Bomber. Things I will not be playing this turn include that. So, we're going to spend the turn just hitting his face a little bit here. Save that Mana Bomber for turn 6, maybe. He'll most likely do something. Maybe he maybe gives it Rock Biter. No, actually, he's not. Okay. Eh, interesting. Ah! My Demolisher is doing work right now. Okay, Arcane Missiles is not a huge risk. It's unlikely to kill the Nerubian Egg. But, unfortunately, that means that the Pyromancer goes off. Which will kill the Nerubian Egg. I, I think at some point we're going to have to face that that Nerubian Egg is going to have to be dealt with one way or the other. I think the best thing to do is pop it and then set up for a Flame Strike. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do it. Hmm. Matter Bomber might work here. Maybe. Let's Arcane Missiles first and see where it lands. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, so we get the detonation. And then we do that. Matter Bomber is now not good, unfortunately. And um, yeah, okay. I think that's about the best we could have hoped for there, really. I was half hoping that the that the thing would pop out and then we could throw a bunch of stuff at it, but. Thinking about it, statistically, that's a four health minion. Oh, here we go again. Bloody hell. He's a persistent little blighter, I'll give him that, but... You gotta promote the crew of that demolisher. They are doing great work today. Alright, so Dr. Boom, I think, is the way to go here. And then just not attack. He can make the and that's the thing because even if he does pop these bombs and gets his Nerubian out, he can't attack with it. And then next turn, I've got Flame Strike to eliminate it. Is that Lightning Storm? Whoa! He's gonna blow the whole lot. That's actually terrible for him potentially. Boom! Boom! Yeah, why would you do that? I, I that would not have been my answer, but hey, he chose it, so be it. Well, we've still got this little problem. Mad Bomber might get me through. Maybe. It may also pop the Nerubian Egg, which would not be brilliant. It's quite likely to pop the Nerubian Egg. But I'd rather not have this thing blunted against a slime, if possible. Flame Strike would get rid of this, but it would pop that, and this lives. Not a brilliant outcome. Alternatively, we throw down the Abomination, and then we just go from there. Which again, yes, it's going to pop the Nerubian Egg. We're all kind of well aware of that. I'm wasting the damage here. I really don't like that. It's going to pop the Nerubian Egg, but simultaneously, he can't fight with it. And then we've got Flame Strike. So I think this is the right call. Matter Bomber was too risky, because I wouldn't have... I may not have even killed the 1-2 Slime with it. Which means that I couldn't have even used Dr. Boom to kill the 4-4. So, all things considered, that probably wouldn't have been the way to go. Alright, so he doesn't have too many options. He overloaded, so... He's lightning storming again! Alright, well, here's hoping... Well, it doesn't matter, everything's gonna... Oh! Uh, huh. That's actually terrible for him. Completely terrible. Lovely. Okay, well, it doesn't get much better than that. Mana Bomber Explosive Sheep puts bodies on the board. And it's hilarious. Explosive Sheep Ping. That's what, four, then drop the five? Yeah. Rather not Flame Strike one target. Plus, it slows me down too much. 
Blow that up. And then we need two bombs on the target. One. Come on. Two. Took a bit more damage than I would have liked, but that puts me with a 5-4 on the board. And I've got another Matter Bomber and two Flame Strikes. Maybe not the most efficient way of dealing with the Nerubian. But it does give me a body on the board, whereas Flame Strike wouldn't have. Cool. I mean, that trades for that, so I'm fine with that. Now it doesn't. But we have Flame Strike, so that's that's not a problem. Hello, Thermaplug. You would be fun. I th don't want to play you this turn, but yeah, we're just going to wipe that. There we go. And then we ping that. That's lovely. That's absolutely ideal. Played right into the hands of the Flame Strike, and he dies. GG. Yes. Yes. Good. That's better. That's the, that's the kind of thing that I was hoping for. Much, much better. Turns out we're not too shabby against the Shaman. Mage on Mage, again. Not the world's biggest fan of that one. No, oh, we don't want Flame Leviathan in our opening hand. Absolutely not. This is an interesting selection. I might hold on to the Explosive Sheep for Blast Mage potential, maybe. Let me toss the Pyro. Please no Flame Leviathan. Ah, Blast Mage Explosive Sheep combo. Good. And we could even coin Knife Juggler here, if we wish. Or we can hold on to... Well, the, the sheep will not live, basically. So this is a six-drop combo. There's no other way around it, really. Arcade Missiles just seems like the best bet here. Yeah, why not? Let's get rid of it. It's like, I don't really want to play the Knife Juggler and then have him trade into that and get a spare part out of it. That doesn't make any damn sense. I'm not going to let him do that. The other thing would have been coin ping, which is just silly. All right, well he's got no he's got no turn to play, so that's totally fine. What I did was reasonable. Just traded a one mana card for a one mana card, although he did come out of it with a part. We don't know what that part is, which it could be incredible potentially, or it could be absolutely useless. We'll see. I wonder how viable this deck would be with Warrior. It would be thematically fantastic to put the mines in there. That whatever, that juggernaut, it's the juggernaut, isn't it? That's the name of it. Uh, we don't have a good play here either. I mean, we could go coin turn five, explosive sheep, blast mage combination is probably not awful. That might work. I just, I don't really want to play the blast mage on its own, but if I'm, if I was playing on curve, I should have. And now I've let him get all this stuff on the board. That's going to be able to go unanswered for a little while. We do have flame cannons. 50-50 hitting the right target. I guess there is no right target here. That's for the mech warper. Alright. So we'll get, we will definitely go with the sheep blast mage next turn. We'll see what else he plays. And then hopefully we'll get some value out of that. Pretty sure it's not correct. What's he got? Clockwork gnome. Okay. Well, that gets blown up by Blast Majors quite nicely. Alright, well, he got really nothing out of that turn, so... I guess we, we get away with it. It's... It's not right. Like, it's not the right way to do this. But this is gonna work out, I think. Uh, that could have been a lot better, but... Everything he's got on the board is now forfeit, thanks to the sheep, so... It did a bit of damage. I would have liked to have just killed the Clockwork Gnome off with that. That would have been good, but... I'm not too worried. I got rid of the Harvest Golem, at least half of it, so it's not the worst thing ever. If he's got any sense, he's probably just going to trade the 2-1 and the 2-1 into the 5-4 now, though. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Yup. What? Uh, okay. Fancy pants. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is optimal, because he gets two extra damage out of that. Abomination next turn. Ooh, hello, Faux Reaper. It's nice to have something with punch. So we've got Dr. Boom into Faux Reaper, potentially. Probably won't need the Flame Strike because the Abomination is already out. So, oh, never mind. He's polymorphing, so looks like we might need the Flame Strike after all. But he's not going to play anything else, so... Okay, Dr. Boom it will be then. He's used a poly. That's good. So if he uses poly again, then Faux Reaper is going to go uncontested. Well, we had a bad start, but it seems to be slowly working its way out. Dr. Boom is just incredible value, in my opinion. Doesn't look it. 7-7 seven, seven for 7, that's a war golem. But these? These are these are great, and they're very hard to play around. Pretty much impossible, really. Pretty much impossible. 
Master spell, I guess, would do it. Fireball. And then ping. But it still leaves the bombs alive. And that means he's burned something which would have killed the Faux Reaper, potentially, so... Mirror image, alright. That's actually a good answer. I think we're gonna have to Flame Strike instead of Faux Reaper here. But he has so little threat on the board. Hmm. I'm thinking of playing the Faux Reaper anyway, because it'll just smash through all of that. So if I Flame Strike, that leaves me with two bombs. If I play the Faux Reaper, and he has another spell... Yeah, I think Flame Strike is the right call. And play maybe the Faux Reaper next turn. What would be right there? I mean, you're really just getting rid of a one drop and two little mirror images. That actually does damage to him, by the way, so that's not too bad. That's three damage he just took for two mana of his own. I can't really complain there. Well, let's see, can we get the Faux Reaper out now? Looks like it. Maybe. Mm, he's got the Yeti now. Probably got enough to kill the Faux Reaper off. Although, maybe not. Depends where this goes. Could just bomb the board. Yeah, I might just bomb the board. Which do we attack? Which gives the best chance of killing something with the bomb. That. It's two to four damage. Let's see where the bomb goes. It's going that way. It does for four. Okay, right. Well, matter bomber then. There we go. Kills that. And kills that. And leaves us with a ping and a knife juggler, which leaves us ahead. And a spare part. How lovely. There we go. Cool. I think the Faux Reaper would have just been so slow and greedy. I prefer this. That gives me two things on the board. And puts me in the lead. Now I get flame striked. Oh no, frost bolted. Okay. Well, he's rapidly burning through stuff. Which is good. Let's see if we can put anything on the board. If he can't, Faux Reaper will be amazing now. And he's used a lot of his spells. Ooh, raw Tinker Town. Never want that. Never want that. Alright. Absolutely 110% Faux Reaper now. There we go. Alright. Does he have his other Polymorph is the question. If he does, that would suck. But I do still have Baron Geddon, so... Armor plated Baron Geddon, maybe. So this is not a bad place to be at all. Got a nasty creature on the board. And he has an answer. Of course he does. Well, well, I mean, that's not an answer yet. It's not dead yet. Has he got a Frostbolt? Can't have. How many bloody spells has this mage got? It's not dead. He's doing a reversing switch. Um, that's actually kind of good for me. Yeah, that... That... Hmm... I mean, it's not it's not awesome, but it's okay. It's still alive, and it's got six health now, and I could armor plate it up to seven. Overdrive. Well, I think we just like we put just massive threat on the board now. It's like, all right, if that's how you're going to be, then this is what we're going to do. The faux reapers maybe not as scary as it once was, but we do now have some terrifying things. Archmage Antonidas. Is that going to save you? It's not. Not at all. Because you are... Uh, actually, he's not dead. He's getting fireballs. That's actually... Oh, dear. This is getting to the point. Because this only... Oh, no. No, he's dead, isn't he? Yeah. What? Yes, of course he's dead. What was the point? <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for the needlessly theatric display. More like arrogant show-off mouse, am I right? Yeah, guys, yeah. It's more burns than Geddon right here. All right. Paladin. Okay, well, similar problems to other stuff. Like, good way to sink arcane missiles and flame cannons into the wrong targets and bomb lobbers as well. But simultaneously, the area of effect is good. 
Probably should have tossed one of those arcane missiles. Holding on to two doesn't make a lot of sense. I have no turn one play here. Unless I draw a, a two drop. Arcane missiles. Ah, yeah. Same situation as last time. Kill it. Turn two pyromancer, unless you play something really strong. In which case, flame cannon. Well, this appears to be a mech paladin, so we really don't want to give it any acceleration. So I think we're just going to flame cannon it. I don't want to give him the ability to start dropping mechanical yetis on turn three. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. So... Arcane missiles... Uh, Pyromancer arcane missiles almost guarantees the kill. But the thing is, this is probably going to die anyway. There we go. No big deal. And then just pop that down. Okay, so, so far, he's not been able to get any momentum whatsoever. And Mech is fairly reliant on synergy or being able to do things like hide the micro machines. He's got no shield and minibot out. All right, true silver champion. Okay, so we're going to lose stuff. That's, that's just how it goes. So that's going to slow me down a little bit. Hopefully, I'll get something I can play that won't die immediately to that. And I do not... I mean, we can play the Pyromancer and it'll die, but it's just the way it's going to go. I'm thinking we hold on to the coin for Dr. Boom. Next turn's Bomb Lobber, probably. Chances are he used the True Silver Champion to kill that and then play something on the board. Hopefully... Oh, it's... Yeah, it's Bomb lobber definitely. But he's unfortunately now got to summon an annoying little minion, so that might end up hitting the wrong target. And I've used both my Arcane Missiles now. A Madder Bomber would be nice here if we could get one. We did not. 50-50 on the bomb lobber to hit the right target. Ah. Well, it is what it is. Okay, Dr. Boom next turn, I think. Yep, so now he trades that into that. That slowed me down quite a lot. Unless he has another way of dealing with it. But it's not protected by anything, so... It's probably fine. Yeah, coin boom next turn, certainly. You know, I haven't seen hide in the hair of the Flame Leviathan up to this point. Flame Leviathan is lovely against paladins and shamans because it kills totems and little minions very easily. But we haven't seen it in like six games. Except for that one where it popped up my opening hand and was utterly useless on the board. Well... Not sure what he's really considering here. I mean, you you throw the two drop into the five drop, and then everybody's happy, and then you play some more stuff, I guess. He's going to Avenging Wrath instead. Okay, he really wants to keep that thing alive. All right, then. Well, I mean, we're not going to let him. Not that we really have that much of a choice. He's going to be able to get this up to a five damage hitter, so... I think it's still Dr. Boom one way or the other, isn't it? But he might be able to hit me for five damage with that, which would suck. So his micro machine has definitely got value. I am still kind of surprised that he held on to that. Like, if he was playing against a normal mage deck, it's likely that he would have just lost that to a Frostbolt. Hell, if I'd drawn either Mad Bomber or Madder Bomber, he would probably would have lost it as well, but I haven't got either of those, so... All right, well, Dr. Boom is on the board. We have Ragnaros and Faux Reaper to follow up as well. And I've got to turn six without taking a massive amount of damage, so that's not too shabby. He has a slight card advantage, and he's got this nasty little bugger on the board. I wonder if he'll attack, then consecrate. He might trade, then consecrate, wipe out the board, although he still take damage to the face from the bombs, so... And that would pretty much be his turn, wouldn't it? So... Let's see what he decides to do. He might have Hammer of Wrath, of course. I wouldn't play more stuff on the board with the bombs there. That's not a good idea. What's he going to do with it? Yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for the face, which I'm fine with because I'll just trade a bomb into it. Unless he has a way of wiping it. Equality? Oh, he's, he is. He's going to Equality Consecrate. Okay. I mean, I suppose I'm all right with that. It lived? Well, I suppose I've got ping, so it doesn't really matter that much. 
don't have much of a follow-up, do I? Do I play explosive sheep here? As a deterrent? If he has any way of killing it. But he only has four cards. I'm going to take the risk. I'll put it out there as a deterrent. Say, hey, you want to flood the board? Well, you got to deal with that. Does he have a way of killing it? The hope is that we have a nice little empty board or we play something really, really strong and then we rag it. Let's see what he comes up with. Jeeves. That's potentially beneficial to me. Not hugely, because I've got expensive stuff on the board, but... What you got? He's gonna silence it. Okay. Interesting. And he's buffing up Jeeves. Alright, so he's gonna get two cards out of that. It's pretty good. I prefer if he hadn't done that. Well, I think Faux Reaper's probably the way to go here. Will he benefit more from the Jeeves or will I? I've got no card draw, so I might want to leave that Jeeves alive. I think we put the Faux Reaper out. Kind of hoping to get that. And then we go for face. And Jeeves gets me a card, which gets me the Flame Strike. That's always nice. So it's benefited him slightly more than it's benefited me up to this point, but I do have that on the board. True Silver Champion coming out. So that's half his mana for this turn. He's not gonna... Really? Huh. I would have thought he would have just killed it with the Jeeves. Guess he really wants that Jeeves to live. Interestingly enough, if that is Noble Sacrifice, Faux Reaper actually works really well against that. Although it would, f it would pop at the end, wouldn't it? This is going to be a very interesting situation. All right. I think this is one of these weird spots where we flame strike and then attack. Or do we ping then attack? That's probably Noble Sacrifice. Noble Sacrifice is going to appear there, meaning that the Faux Reaper's attack is going to hit that and only hit that. If I flame strike first, that will wipe out the Silver Hand Recruit at the end, meaning that the Faux Reaper, when attacking that, will kill the Shielded Minibot, which would be the optimal route. Am I right there? I mean, yeah, that wipes the board, doesn't it? Yeah, that's that's the right that's the right call. Overdrive engaged. Either way, I think the right is okay. The right call here is actually to attack this. If it's not a noble sacrifice, he takes six damage. If it is a noble sacrifice, the noble sacrifice summons here and kills this anyway. Like so. Cool. Yeah, so in that situation, that was the right play, I think. And we got him on the ropes. We still have Rag, which is a potential game ender. But he does have 10 mana and 4 cards, and I'm only on 13 health, so he might be able to beat me from here. He's going to equality that too. All right, well, that lets Rag go... And do whatever Rag wants to do. Is he going to take the risk? Divine favor. Okay. Is he going to actually hit it? He's going to hit it. Risky business. Okay, I've got a 33% chance of winning the game right now. If I play Ragnaros. He's burned both of his equalities. Baron Geddon is probably a better play here, though. Baron Geddon's the safer play. Ragnaros is the flashier, but potentially awful play. I'm going to play Geddon, knock that down, and then we can wipe the board. And then we've got a big threat on the board anyway, so unless he can answer that, he's still in trouble. So and we still got the rag in the hand. If we, can so if we can clear the board and play the rag, then he loses. I, I don't really want to throw the rag out there. I don't know. I mean, he'd use both equalities, so maybe the rag was the right call, even if it did miss. It's still on the board. How does he deal with it? Because if now he starts throwing out Guardians of Kings, then he's going to put himself above lethal range. So maybe that wasn't the right play. Hard to say. Okay. Is he just going to trade that in? 
I guess he is. All right, then. Okay, well... Oh, another harvest golem. Good lord. Yeah, bunch of stuff going on the board. So we can clear... Oh, bloody hell, how much? This... You're just getting flame striked right now, okay? You're out of cards. You are getting flame striked, whether you bloody well like it or not. Thank you very much. Go away. Go away. All right, I think we've probably got him now. Unless he somehow has a way of doing nine damage with two cards. Can he do that? Um, I guess. Holy Wrath. Very lucky Holy Wrath. Avenging Wrath, Hammer of Wrath. Very lucky. Actually, you wouldn't even need to be very lucky. Avenging ha Wrath, Hammer of Wrath would actually kill me out right here. Because it would kill both the 1-1s. One -ones. Then he follows that up. So that's six damage plus three. Yeah. But the chance of him having both of those cards is astronomically low. So I'm sure that will be just fine. No, he doesn't have them. Good. Okay. Right. Well, I think... Uh, he's not dead yet. <laughs> I could still lose. No, I cannot still lose. <laughs> just kidding. And that, as they say, is finally that. And still no sign of the bloody flame leviathan. He's gone off to Tahiti, apparently. All right, there you go, folks. That is the deck that I call Michael Bay. I think you could refine that a little bit, certainly. But it's a very fun deck with some explosive results. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.